Hit it. What's up, guys? My name is Nate. Welcome to the very first episode of the Real Steel Projects podcast. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, really cool episode. If you've been following the journey so far, I just want to say thank you. It's um, been a wild ride from starting the Instagram page to um, going through that, then going to the TikTok, then the YouTube, and now we're doing a podcast. So <clears throat> this is your first time seeing us. Welcome. Um, I guess I'll give a bit of a um, rundown in a little bit. But first, I want to introduce a few people to you. So, <clears throat> uh, firstly, my name is Nate. Um, I'm the builder of most of the stuff here at Real Steel Projects. Um, if you haven't seen some of the stuff we do online, we do a lot of movie and game props. Um, this has been a pretty big venture, I guess, lifelong really. But as a business, we sort of started things in 2019. Um, and then we <clears throat> moved our way all the way up into present day, where it's my full-time income. Um, I want to uh, take a moment to introduce someone behind the camera. We, camera Kurt, he's behind the camera. He's uh, He's been there since day one. The very first post is thanks to him. If he wasn't a part of that, it would never have happened. So he's as much a part of Real Steel as anyone else. Um, you probably won't see him too much on camera. You might hear him from time to time. He's uh, he's always there though. He's been helping us out since day one. So I want to make sure I give a shout out to him. Um, in a second, I'm going to introduce you to Lucas. I've got a few questions to ask, but uh, yeah. I guess I will... Um, actually, no, I'll jump straight into it right now. Go for Sorry. it, mate. Mr. Lucas. How are you going? Good. Welcome to the very first episode of the podcast. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. How does it feel being on the couch and uh, <laughs> with a microphone strapped to you? It's a little bit different, to be fair. It's, yeah. it's not something you do every day. Not many people, especially coming from the trade that I do, do it, I suppose. Yeah. You know, it's our first dive into doing long-form talking content, so... Absolutely. I'm sure people will be a little bit forgiving us for a while. Um, <laughs> what do you do for a living, Lucas? I am a welder. I've been welding for the last, wow, this is 10 years. I really? Think. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, right? I mean, what are the odds of that? Yeah. Uh, I guess it's worth saying that me and Lucas, um, we, uh, we've been really good friends ever since we were little kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, since primary school. Yeah. Um, we finished high school. And uh, we dropped out of high school. <laughs> we went to a um, high school trade school and uh, we got separated, which at first was kind of scary for me. Yeah. didn't really have any friends there. But yeah. in a way, it was good because we both won the award for best in our retrospective fields, engineering yeah. and, and fabrication. Yeah. No, well, Pretty definitely crazy. a bit of a shock. I mean, you go up thinking, oh, yeah, I'm doing all right. And then you go there and you're actually getting these achievements is pretty cool. Yeah. And like you, I and camera Kurt, we had days behind the scenes um, in my dad's oh, shed. Geez, yeah, in the shed. Welding up. Welding up. Any gal of metal gal, my, just... my poor father left around for us to grab a head of. <laughs> poor Ark World cop the flogging, that's for sure. <laughs> no ventilation. No. Um, for those fumes. that are unaware, gal fumes is like one of the most toxic things oh, yeah. you can be introduced to. It's great. And we're just looking in the in the sky, all oh, these little cool little wispies. Do you things. remember the episode of The Simpsons where Homer's in space yeah. and he's eating the chips? <laughs> yeah. I was doing that with Galv because yeah. I thought it was funny. Yeah. And then I was uh, coughing up blood in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're in uh, grade nine. Oh, no, grade eight. Yeah, no, pretty young. Because we went to our, our high school. I'm not sure if it's still a thing that even exists. Looking back on it, retrospective-wise, how sketch that they had a metal tech program. Oh, unbelievably. <laughs> and one teacher to look after, what was it, like 20 kids or something like that. My second week, we were oxy-cutting. Yeah. That is insane. I was 14. Yeah. And unsupervised oxy-cutting. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. You just, here you go. Give it a go, mate. Pretty nuts to think about. Oh, it's insane. I, yeah, I don't think they would. Surely not. But, I mean, look at the impact it had. Well, um, yeah. I, uh, I fell in love with it when I was... I did the worst pigeon shit... Um, weld you could see <laughs> yeah. on these bit of scrap and I was so proud of it I oh, brought it yeah. home and showed my granddad he looked at it he's like well it's strong <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah like you remember when we uh, had to do the braze welding yeah yeah, yeah and like you had to have those little just 25 mil by yeah, like yeah, 100 yeah. mil strips of steel you bang it in the vice when you're done yeah. if it survives yeah and it just looked absolutely <laughs> absolutely horrible it looks like someone just gone and spat on it's pretty it. bad but it was strong yeah, well, I mean, it probably wasn't. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you survived being hit by a hammer. Yeah, but uh, but I, I loved Metal Tech. That was the thing that I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. 
And, and then we started doing and there. We, now we are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Otherwise, I mean, family life. You've got some exciting news. Yeah, I got married uh, November last year, so not too long ago. And we are me and my wife were expecting a little baby girl come out. Uh, she'll be due late October, I'm pretty sure. That's so cool, man. Little Natalie. <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> Natalie. Good name her after me. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I hope Why so. not? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's crazy, man. And uh, what else? What else can you tell me? What, what's your hobbies? What are you into? I already know this, but I'm going to pretend yeah, that I don't. Yeah, you already know this. You're making put me on the spot. I yeah, well, come on. Well, you work. Well, actually, let's yeah. rewind a little bit first. So, what do you do for a living? You're a welder. I'm a welder. Yes. What kind of welding do you do? Because that's a pretty broad topic. Uh, <laughs> aluminium welding. I focus on um, like automotive stuff. I work for a, a four-wheel drive place um, that, that does servicing and stuff like that. But we make intercoolers and all the pipe work and stuff associated with turbo kits and yeah just that sort of stuff so i've been doing that pretty much singular like that's the thing i've been focused on for the last 10 years it's mainly foot pedal welding isn't it yeah yeah because it's uh on ac, AC aluminium. DC. so you need the the frequency because of the aluminium is so um like it can heat up really quickly so you want to have that adjustment on the fly so it doesn't have you away. used the hand pieces that have a wheel and you can adjust as you go? Yeah. They're the worst. They are impossible. <laughs> I tried and I threw it at the wall. I said, I'm not using this bloody thing. My poor welder has been through hell and back with me. <clears throat> it is um, held together with tape and good oh, intentions. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, mine's a button one, but mine's a little right. bit different what I'm doing. So. Well, yeah. And I mean, what's the hottest you would weld at, really? Actually, lately we've been doing some pretty thick stuff. So, well, it's probably nothing compared to what you're doing, but <laughs> yeah. we crank up to about 140, and I can do that for a solid five minutes before I knock out power to my shed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, obviously, you guys be welding some pretty thick alley at times. So you probably have it cranked. Oh. Uh, alley soaks it up, though, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. It really, it really does. takes the heat. It does. So, like, the thickest I'd probably be welding is only about 10 mil. So, it's not really all that much, but still. You know, my welder goes up to 300 amps and it hits that pretty regularly. Yeah. yeah. Everything we're talking about, and I'm just realizing, is like child's play compared to what Camera Kurt works with. Oh, yeah. It's insane. <laughs> with his heavy steel. Uh, I welded 10 mil steel the yeah, other day. 10 mil. Pretty, like, that's his filler wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for play. those who don't know, Camera Kurt, I'll probably stop calling that, but Kurt behind the camera, that might sound better. He uh, he does heavy structural steel for a living, and that is insane. That is so, oh, sorry. It is a heavy pipe welding. Yeah. Um, a bit of structure still here and there, but pipe welding is another level. Oh, it's insane. So. The tolerances that you got to work with in that. Yeah. You've got to be special human about it. I can't, no. I couldn't imagine. Oh, God, no. But, yeah. Aluminium is so easy. It's, if it's bent that way, you just get a one tap of the hammer and it's all good. <laughs> well, I mean, so if you work with four drives, you're obviously interested in that as a hobby. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I've got a, an 80 series Land Cruiser that I've put way too much bloody money into and... It still just keeps breaking every time I use it, but I suppose that's that's part of the fun, I guess. It's Toyota Tough. Oh, yeah. Toyota Tough. Go. I have the mighty Outlander. Oh, the Outlander. Man. I've, I've taken it on two sand dunes yep. in its day. Um, it went all right. Got bogged? Uh, no. Oh, you know what? It didn't. It's at the top when I stopped. It kind of sank in a bit. Yeah. But uh, no, we, we were all right. We were all right. But uh, yeah, we were both in the camping. Uh, like yeah, I guess I should that camping. Um, I started Real Steel Adventures with the intent to be uploading regular camping content on that because it's a huge hobby of mine. But right about the time I started doing Real Steel Adventures, um, it was pretty close to Christmas time and it, we blew up with orders. So yeah. I'm not complaining. I'm very, uh, very appreciative of the support that Real Steel Projects has had. Oh, absolutely. But uh, yeah, it made that account die. I've got two posts on that account, I think. Yeah. But uh, you know, we'll get through this order list and well, when we do, yeah. we'll, we'll, I'll get some more content on there. The, you know. the thing with... Uh posting regular camping trips and stuff like that is you need to be going camping regularly. <laughs> yeah, well, and, you know... I'll just take lots of photos and pretend they're different times. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to flog heaps of the same stuff. But, no, you know, we've got, like, between, like, our, our friend group, just about every bit of camping gear you can get your hands on. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it'd be cool to do <clears> reviews <throat> and that kind of stuff on that as well. Um, like, I recently bought a new swag, and I think it is the best. I tell everyone I can about my yeah, swag. Yeah, yeah. So... The ducks um, nuts, apparently. Well, we're going off on a little bit of a tangent here. I guess we should re-touch back <laughs> on um, uh, what the intent of this podcast is. So this is going to be a really good opportunity for you guys to get to know us a little bit behind the scenes of who we are, what we do, um, the ins and outs of real steel projects. We'll be on that, uh, touching on that from time to time. Um, you know, there's 
a lot of exciting new builds coming up in in future times i'm going to be uploading one very soon a really highly requested one but also it gives us a opportunity to just have fun it's going to be kind of like a smoker room chat what you could expect yeah. minus maybe some of the swearing that you would see in a normal <laughs> factory and on that note it's probably worth saying they're bound to slip out from time to time oh, we've probably spent more time inside a workshop than out of it oh yeah so for that <laughs> we're gonna do our best but um the youtube version will be uh it'll be censored yeah for youtube reasons obviously and then our Spotify versions um, and listener and all, all those other places we can hear us. Wherever you're listening to us, it might not be. So something to think about. Get ready if you, for a few. If you're ready, ready for a swear word here or there, that's probably something that's going to happen yeah. from time to time. But uh, yeah, uh, and it's just going to be a chat. Well, heaps of stories. Heaps, and like, oh, you know, like we have this platform. Why not take the chance to do it? But. Another really big important part about this podcast is we want to get to know you guys a bit more too. So this mm. gives you an opportunity to comment on our videos, you know, get involved in the conversation topics we talk yeah. about. We want to hear more from you guys. And then uh, we want to build this community to something pretty special. Um, the response that we've already had on the videos has been insane. So there's some really cool people out there. We want to give them more of a chance to chat to us. Of course, our patrons over at Patreon, they're going to have a bit more of a say. Um, our loyal patrons, supporters who have been there, they Probably haven't seen heaps of content lately, but <laughs> we've changed things up a little bit recently. They um, have the ability to vote on topics that we're going to be talking about. So any questions they ask, that's definitely going to be something that we bring up at the end of the show. Um, obviously, at the moment, we don't have too many questions, but that's all good. And also, our Patreon is going to be at the end of every video. We're going to make sure that they're um, that everyone knows that we appreciate yeah, yeah, what, what they've got. Out. You know, we're going to uh, yeah be shouting them out. Mm, so absolutely, just want to touch on that. Um, well, that probably, uh, I guess another thing that we want to go for a segment style podcast. So mm. it's going to be a few segments mixed up into one. Yep. Um, this gives us the ability because like I said, Real Super Projects is super hectic busy. He's about to be a dad. Um, we've got all the other stuff going on. So if we can film it in segments, it just makes it easier for us to do it this way. So you might notice on the video version from time to time, we have a costume change. So don't freak yeah. out too much about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have, um, we, we're not finished in the studio yet. We've still got a few things to go. Like I said, yeah. we've been flat chat, not making too many excuses, but it's all I've done for the past two minutes. So oh, yeah. I mean... um, yeah, so just thought I'd get that. Um, put that out there about what, what you can expect in, in, in coming weeks. Is there anything else you wanted to add? No, I think you've wrapped it up pretty good in a nice little bow. All right, cool. Well, that gets us straight into the next topic. Beautiful. Lucas! Nathan! <laughs> Got another good one for you. Yeah. So, um, start of 2021, mm. um, me and Emily, my wife, mm. we went on a holiday to Queensland. Yep. Because that's what you do when you live in Adelaide. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the... When you live in Australia? Well, everyone goes to the holiday, it's either Bali or Gold Coast. And Gold yeah. Coast is much cheaper than Bali. Well, we went post-COVID right in the early days. Yeah. And it was pretty sad to see how much of it was oh, it destroyed by COVID, obviously. Because yeah. it's the tourist capital of Australia. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and this made me think of this because the other day I was listening to a podcast that was talking about how <laughs> wild Australian wildlife is. Mm -hmm. And they got me thinking about <sighs> Australian wildlife isn't... No, <sighs> I've, I mean, I've had a snake in here, <laughs> but I mean, for the, mo for the most part, snakes and spiders, that's, really. that's probably the, the worst you have to worry well, about. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we regularly get huntsmen of wolf spiders here, Absolutely. which, you know, you get it's you know, a regular that thing, big, but yeah. it's, uh, they're not dangerous like wolves and mountain lions and no, bears no. are in America. No. Like we've probably, probably got it easier than them for being honest. Really? Like you go camping and there's zero worry about that threat. Mm. You don't have to worry about it bears or you don't have to worry about wolves you just got to worry about kangaroos coming into your camp and trying to take your food when you sleep. <laughs> yeah that's it yeah is that a thing yeah it's happened to me really yeah i left a loaf of bread out and the cheeky bugger took the loaf of bread and hopped away <laughs> <laughs> that, Spewing, I had no bread that was me <laughs> 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 um but i do have a crazy wildlife story hit me don't so hit me, but... um <laughs> So these tourist places that have theme parks in them, this, uh, sorry, Queensland has um, some tourist parks, mm. some theme parks. Yeah. Um, they've got like Movie World, Dream World, Sea World, all the worlds. Mm. Um, they're pretty average compared to like the overseas variants of oh, these okay. places. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But still, but, when, like, it's still cool. Oh, yeah, for I sure. If, yeah, they're heaps of fun, right? Yeah. Um, sea World, though, is infested. With ibises, oh, bin, chicken. bin chickens, <laughs> and bloody seagulls. Oh, yeah. To the point where it's almost a joke. You're walking around. Nothing makes you feel worse as a grown man than 
bobbing and weaving <laughs> and ducking out of the way of seagulls. Yeah. Especially when people around you aren't doing that. <laughs> you overcompensate that bird's going to fly in too late. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, me and Emily had gone to lunch at SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's a recent thing or whatever, but SeaWorld at the time had slushy uh, Jim Beams oh, and what? slushy caning clubs. So me and Emily got a little loosey goosey. Yeah, well, you mean? You and got uh, it. yeah, yeah, well, we're having a, yeah, it was great. We're having a few <laughs> drinks. I watched a seagull take an entire burger off <laughs> of a woman. It is one of my and Emily's favorite like a normal, stories. Like a, not a big albatross, just like a normal seagull. Just a normal seagull. Gee, that's a ballsy bird, though. I couldn't believe it because we were already on edge because of the bird, especially in the food area. Yeah, yeah. They're everywhere. They're yeah. on the table. The ibises have no shame. No. Um, <laughs> they're on your table, they're under your table, mm. they're all around you. And this woman had just opened up her little cardboard yep. burger container and like lifted it up. I hope this woman somehow hears this podcast. <laughs> so, oh, she, so she was holding on to it. She was holding it. And this bird Jeez. flew in, this seagull, took the, she didn't get one bite, <laughs> took the whole burger. And as it lifted it through the air, it like fell over the floor. <laughs> and then like a thousand other birds <laughs> just, give, <laughs> just bum rushed the, the food on the floor. Jeez, that's so good. This thing I would have been like, oh, you watched this, boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he had the balls. Yeah, it was pretty full on. <laughs> Those, and that is probably my worst animal. Do you have any crazy animal? I mean, yeah, the kangaroo is still yellow for bread, apparently. Well, yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> well, no, it happened, mate. Trust yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. dude, I. Well, because you know, you're camping, you're having a. You know what? I a seen trip. a seagull, an airborne rat, take <laughs> to, take a burger straight out of a woman's hands. I believe a that's kangaroo nuts. Takes a yeah. No honestly, kidding. That's, <laughs> I would let him have the burger, honestly. Like not at like thirty seven dollars a burger no, or whatever they are. At, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much they are, but probably not too far off. Plus that, twenty dollars at least for a burger oh, yeah. by itself, and it would be like. Eight dollars for chips. Yeah, yeah, well, that's probably helping it too. The seagull. True. Yeah, you're not Plus, taking. He's a... probably got a black belt and taking. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> in taking food off Taurus. Yeah, it's not like the the seagulls you get on the beach that just come and annoy you when you want they they want your chips. You know. They're... Yeah, there's a guy around here. You might have seen him. Yeah, the old bloke. How cool is that? He cruises yeah. around in his little hylax and yeah, yeah. The seagulls just will follow him. Has his arm out the window and they land on his arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty crazy. It's Actually, like... have you like seen the? Oh, you've probably seen it on TikTok maybe where people like training crows. I have to, not seen you haven't that, seen no. it, so you could pretty like easily train crows to mm. like be a friend, yeah, right, and bring your shit, yeah, okay, yeah. And there's like this guy in America who gets brought money in New York huh. by well ravens probably over there, yeah, and um, yeah, he just like leaves feed out for them, and when they bring something that he likes more, he leaves more feed or better feed, oh, okay, and uh, yeah, so they're like, all right, if I pick up a twenty dollar bill, <laughs> I get more of the feed that I like. And there's like a bunch of them. So he's just making like 150 bucks a week off these crows. Imagine that. Like you, you go to the ATM or something, you go, boop, boop, get your money out, and a bird just goes, takes your money. Yeah. There's some fat guy near SeaWorld training seagulls to take burgers. He's <laughs> yeah. got a table full of food. Yeah, dude. Oh, I mean, those theme parks are. They've had some bad luck lately, haven't they? There's been a few bad things happening those. But I loved them growing up. Oh, man. It's. It, well, like we said before, it was the thing to do. Is when you go on holiday, you go to Gold Coast, you go to the Movie World, yeah. the Sea World, and all that. Dude, we went there. We went there in we our apprenticeships. So I remember we went to Movie World. So we had one day where we we're going to go from Gold Coast to Brisbane, but it was a uh, bucketing down rain, hosing, yeah. and we're like, ah, oh, kind of ruin it. So like, what should we do? But we bought a three day pass to these theme parks. Mm. And we're like, oh, let's go back to Movie World because we went there a couple of days ago. Yeah. With shiny Queensland weather. Yeah, and um, we went up there, bucketing down a rain. Mm-hmm. Probably like 80 people in the park. It was the funnest time. Yeah. Because there was no lines. Zero time. lines. Some of the rides couldn't go on. Yeah. Because you gone Too wet. Yeah, too wet. Mm. But uh, the um, we went on this Scooby-Doo ride, which should be decommissioned. The Scooby-Doo <laughs> so Scooby sketch. Ghost. Uh, that yeah. I don't think it's had maintenance since it was bloody built. <laughs> yeah. I remember I got the, um, uh, the picture <laughs> thing. So you could, you could buy this picture package so you can get... Unlimited photos. Yeah. I've got like 80 photos of us <laughs> on that same ride, just, pulling stupid faces, doing dumb shit. messing with other people in the <laughs> car with us. Yeah, geez. What's, what's your guys' best animal story, especially in Australia? I'd love to hear if you've had any like crazy stories with with the wildlife. I mean, I bet there's some people in the top end that oh, dealt with man. crocodiles and I've heard some wild yeah, stuff about that. But. Compared to that, I mean, we probably wouldn't have anything too crazy down here in SA. But I mean, growing up, when I grew up as a little kid, we had a semi-rural country sort of property 
my parents bought it and put the house on it and that. So it was a pretty common occurrence to get lizards and snakes and, you know, you're just like, oh, whatever, no worries. But um, when they got too close to the house, that's when something was done about it. And uh, mum was just so, like, she, she saw a snake one day and she was like, oh, oh, no. And so dad was at work, I think. And uh, me and my brother were at home running around. And so she's like, fine, I've got to do something about this myself. <laughs> and so she runs to the shed <laughs> and she grabs the first thing that she can see. It's the shovel. <laughs> so she runs back. And this poor snake, he's just minding his own business, <laughs> slithering along. And then mum goes, bloody. She knocked the phone off the hook with that shovel and called the snake catcher. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's illegal to kill them in Australia. <laughs> right. <laughs> that didn't happen. Yeah. I yeah, know that. no, no, but I mean, crazy. I mean, it's a. I guess snakes are a fairly regular part of life here. Oh yeah, it's a. Well, I mean, my parents. Oh, sorry, my parents. My parents-in-law. Mm. They live on a property and they have yeah, all they the do. time. Oh, absolutely. So especially if you've got chickens and you know a lot of people around here do have chickens. When yeah. I was a little kid, um, we had a sand pit. It was yeah. like fairly suburban mm. area, and I used to. I was really lucky, like four or five years old. Jump off the swing set that we had into the sand pit because I'm an idiot. Probably got ADD. <laughs> And um, that was my game. <laughs> and uh, I remember, well, I don't really remember that well, but I've heard this story from other people many times. Mm. Um, I could see something in the sand. So I ran inside and I was like, Mom, Mom, there's a snake in the sand pit. She's like, no, nah, it's a lizard. You're all good. Keep, keep playing your little <laughs> triangle back game of jumping off the thing and back up. <laughs> um, and then I, I think I came back in again. I was like, no, no, there's definitely a snake in there. Mm. And I was like, King Brown. Oh, sick. King Brown snake. Yeah, pretty big. On your mum. Yeah. That's your go. Yeah, my dad got the um the shovel phone book out for that oh, one too. Oh, yeah, the old shovel phone book. Yeah. Pretty crazy though, right? Just mm. one of the top three deadliest snakes in the world just chilling in backyards. Yeah, just no worries. Probably would have died. Very is, it, is there a anti-venom? Surely. Oh, not that I've heard of. I don't know. I mean, no. I'm, not, I'm not, not Googling it. Well, actually, you had a snake in at your work the other day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so my boss just, he came back from uh, his trip up to Northern Territory. He was up there for three weeks. He goes up there, goes fishing and all that. And um, somehow, uh, well, not somehow, a snake was like, oh, this is a nice warm spot to chill. And it climbed up and went into, uh, into his engine bay. And it, 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 it got a trip all the way from Northern Territory <laughs> back down to Adelaide. And like, so he pulls up into the, into the workshop and like, oh, yeah, g'day, mate, how you going? He popped his bonnet because he wanted to look at something. And we're all like, what's that? Just <laughs> thought it was like a leaf or something stuck in the, in the, like, the bonnet webbing. And um, like, it's a, it's a bloody snake, that is. <laughs> it's a freaking snake. And we're like, in okay, bonnet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. it's just curled up there having a snooze. And so we're like, oh, no. Luckily, like, it's not a venomous one. It, was a, it turned out to be a children's python, so they just bite you. But there's no, no. venom. But this Still. one, this one was super chill, like... He got on the phone to his mate. He's a he's a snake catcher, so he came down, but um, he just sort of left his car there, left the bonnet up so he could keep an eye on the snake. I turn around back on the bench and keep welding, and after five minutes, I'm like, "Have a look, snake's gone." I'm like, <laughs> "Why no, is nobody watching the snake?" No good. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm like, "Not okay, ideal." Feet yeah. up off the ground. Um, he just sort of went a little bit further into the engine, but we're like. Jeez, so, but yeah, one of my co-workers got it out and it was super, super chill. It was just like... Just happy to be there. Yeah, just happy to be there. On a holiday in South Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the snake catcher came and he... I'm not sure what they do with yeah, it. Yeah, no shovel. No, no shovel. No shovel <laughs> phone book for that one. <laughs> All right, Lucas, I have a interesting question for you. And for it's it, around workplace injuries because we've been in the trade for a while. Everyone's had them. Everyone's had them. I had 19... Uh, my worst injury, I had 19 stitches in yeah, one finger. Did good, mate. Did yeah, good. I guess I would, I would tell that story first. Go but I it. have what I think is the worst non-death work injury that I've ever heard of. Um, I've got that loaded in the chamber. It's not mine, but I have mine loaded in the chamber for, for when we get around to it. But, yep. um, so where I came from, where I used to work, uh, it was a center steel fabrication workshop where... I mainly specialize in building um, commercial fridges. So like your deli fridges you yeah. see at supermarkets and whatnot. Butchers and that. Yeah, that's the deal. Um, but every now and again, actually at this time, no, 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 it was, yeah. So every now and again, I did other stuff too. So I started my, I suppose my career there, um, obviously as an apprentice and you work your way up to what you can handle. And I did a lot of benching uh, first and then um, odd fridge every now and again with um, the guy that trained me, uh, I should 
probably give him a bit of a shout out, but uh, Richard, who trained me, mm. I owe the world to that guy. He was oh, another sure. guy who really pushed me to do this. So yeah, um, he really supported me the whole way through. I really have a lot of appreciation for him. Um, some people, you, you've, you're really lucky out sometimes in life. He was a great guy. But oh, yeah. He, uh, uh, yeah. So when I wasn't working with Richard, I, um, at this particular point, I think uh, the, it was a very busy factory. Um, you know, we had heaps on our plate mm. and uh, I got put on this um, range hood, like a big fish and chips yep, yep. Uh, shop, or I suppose we got international listeners as well. Um, so I guess it's like a- Takeaway a, shop. Yeah, yeah, takeaway shop. It was a, um, a big exhaust canopy for yeah. over your, your uh, deep fryer oil yeah. dealios. And um, this was such a big one. They call it a double banker. At least this place did, and it sort of looked like a big M shape if you look at the side profile, and yeah. it had two banks, so you could have fryers either sides, and then oh, in the yeah. middle, well, went pretty middle fryer, and you could be either side of it, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And in the middle, there was a big gutter because it's going to leak, like fat's going to yeah. drip. So That's this delicious. big gutter. Um, <laughs> Yum. At the time, it was so busy in that factory, and uh, <clears throat> you know, our organization there was a bit how you go on at times and it got to a stage when um my boss was like this has to be out by lunchtime it has to be made by lunchtime blah, blah 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 so me and this other guy we were right so my boss puts this other guy on with me really sweet guy but we were rushing like crazy mm. and uh when you rush in a metal shop like things are bound to happen oh and, yeah um putting in this gutter the the big center gutter for the the m shape um uh, I sort of clamped it up myself and it wasn't quite right. So the guy was working with me. He's like, um, what can I do? What can I do? I have any help. So yeah. I was like, yeah, just undo the clamps and like push them over. And then uh, he did that and like the, the metal slipped, but my hand was kind of in the way. Mm. So a blunt piece of metal yeah. sheared off the top part of my ring finger. Um, uh, yeah, it was holding, holding on by this tiny little bit of skin here. And... Uh, yeah, bang, one second, it just happened. And yeah, so quickly. And that's how it always is. Just yeah. Split second thing. I just looked down to see uh, red, freak out, did the dumbest thing probably I've ever done. <laughs> just like, stuck at my mouth. Yeah. This is a gross detail, but it was yeah. like someone got a pump bottle, like a water bottle, and squeezed it, yeah. just blood in my just mouth. Blood. Oh. And then I like went, ran to the, uh, oh. ran to the sink, spat this blood into it. <laughs> Grabbed the hand towel, uh, left the big bloody handprint on the hand towel, wrapped my finger up. Now, I was the first aid officer, so yeah. it is the first aid officer go to when he gets hurt. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, what did you do? Did uh, yeah, so I ran to my boss, um, <laughs> you know, bless him. <laughs> he was uh, engrossed in a conversation at the time that he didn't quite understand the urgency. <laughs> um, Just hang on a second, mate. It was a bit like that. <laughs> and then he looks at me and I had blood on my beard, so he thought I did something in my face. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's my finger. And then we went into the, the smoker room, uh, took the towel off, and this part of my finger was that way. Oh. And, and it was like solid chunk of meat that way. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the clinic. I got to the clinic and they're like, yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we could, thinking, it's mate. not going to happen. So we drove to... First, the Lunga Hospital, and then they transferred me to Flinders Hospital. Yeah. At this stage, it had gone like black. Yeah. And like a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, waited in the waiting room. And then um, the doctor comes out, he grabs me, and they're like, You're lucky we got a plastic surgeon in. And he's like to me, Almost 0% chance that's going to take. It's been so long. Yeah. He had to scrub it out with a toothbrush. Oh. But no pain, because I cut the nerve off. That would have been so weird. No pain. Watching it, it looks like it would be absolutely agonizing. But... Yeah. Uh, to this day, I've got almost no feeling in it. Really? Um, the, uh, yeah, I've burnt it a few times without realizing. <laughs> <laughs> the only pain I felt was they, before they stitched it, they put a ring block in, which is like an injection that squishes all the stuff. Yeah. That really, really yeah, hurt. That, hurt. that wasn't much fun at all. Because yeah. it's like three needles into the bone. Or into, the... into in between the bone. Yeah, right. Yeah, it sucked. That wasn't much fun. But uh, yeah, the 19 stitches, five weeks off work. We five just days. landed a new fridge contract. <laughs> like I said, we we're pretty busy at the time. No nations for five weeks. Yeah, what about you? What's what's some of the worst ones you've heard? I mean, your brother had a Well, yeah, right? I was just going to say that. I mean, I've been very, very lucky. I haven't actually done anything besides, you know, burning myself stupidly. No like stitches? Old... No, no stitches. No I've way. never had stitches in my life. Any sort of like outside of work really? injury or anything like that. I've been very, very lucky. I've, I've burnt myself plenty of times, you know, just doing the stupid thing like, um, I don't know, you might do it, fill a wire if you need to move something around in your bench, you put the fill a wire in your mouth and you do Ooh. stuff like that. And I would have just laid a fat weld and then I've put the, uh, the really, really, really hot bit of the fill a wire 
And so I've burnt my lips, so that was fun. And, you know, you, there's a lot of choice words being thrown around, <laughs> especially how dumb you feel when you do that. Yeah. But, um, I've seen uh, a bloke at work, he um, don't work with him anymore, but this was a few years ago. He was, um, I don't know what was really going through his head, <laughs> what he was trying to achieve. Those but, are the best ones. Oh, when you yeah. go like, I know how you got injured, but I don't understand why, yeah, <laughs> how um, you got injured. He, he, he was trying to cut down... A, a weld on boss, which is only like 25 mil anyway. And he was trying to cut it in the, you know, the cutoff saw. Like and, a circular drop saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A circular like drop a saw. a high speed circular drop saw. Yeah. And so obviously this thing's only 25 mil, so it hands really close to it. <laughs> but he thought, oh, I can't really hold it. I'll get a stainless steel bolt and like put it because it's got a tap hole. <laughs> put the, that into this aluminium boss. And then he's like, oh, yeah, that works beautiful. And he goes, yeah. And then obviously the the blade that's meant to cut aluminium and aluminium only doesn't really agree to with the slams steel into bolt. this stainless steel bolt. Yeah, yeah. So that just pretty much grabbed his thumb and jammed it into the blade. So was he just holding it? Yeah, yeah. He, he was didn't holding... put it in a vice or anything. No, 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 no. He was just holding it like <laughs> the blade's here and he's holding it like yeah. Really not oh. the smartest thing to do. And yeah, it jammed his thumb into the blade that's spinning at however many RPMs. I don't know how hard. Lose it. It just took a nice big old scoop out. Oh. So like, he, did, he didn't put his thumb in his mouth. No. Just Why would you do thumb. that? It's dumb. No. <laughs> yeah. Just grabbed his thumb and went, oh, and then ran and found someone. But, Jeez. you know, I went to go use the saw after and I thought, what's that? And there's still a bit of his thumb sitting on the on the, on the the bed. And I was like, Oy, really? that's a bit great. So I picked it up and put it back on his bench. I thought he might want I wonder it. what the go is in like <laughs> in the workshops now that saw stop exists. Like, do you have a duty of care to have that technology? Well, you should, but I mean... I suppose it isn't, is there, probably isn't that kind of, like a drop saw, saw stop. I know that there's a table one. Yeah, I've not seen anything. Not really so it makes sense that, you know, if that's available, that it's you have a duty, you know, like, your car, well, yeah. any new car needs airbags. Oh, exactly right. There's, there's you can't very, just release one without very, it. Very, very um, stringent guidelines that they need to adhere by, and yeah. I guess in some factories it's just non-existent. Well, really. look, we've <laughs> we've all worked in some dodgy places. Yeah. I uh, my workshop was straight out of the seventies. Um, yeah. <laughs> when I was there, when I first started there, it was a bit of a wild west. Like I'm very appreciative for what I got out of that place, you know. But Absolutely. um, sometimes they're better. It's good fun. <laughs> well, you yeah. learn how to do it the wrong way, so then you learn how to do it the right way. I, I guess, yeah, yeah, that's true. Like when I started there, there was we used to leave uh, sheets of styrofoam board. Mm. Up, up for our fridges yeah. up against um, the wall and uh, one of the guys I used to work with used to just throw cutting wheels or anything else into it because it stuck like throwing stars yeah, yeah. super dangerous oh yeah but uh, yeah past and goes, I have the worst injury story of all time go for it um, this comes from another guy who's probably going to be appearing from time to time on the podcast um, if I can drag him onto it but <laughs> um, so a really close friend of ours, Stuart. Oh, big um, Stuart. He told me this story. So I don't know who this happened to directly. Um, so not that I would give names anyway, but I don't know this guy's name. Mm. Um, but this is a horrific, horrific oh, story. Yeah. I think you might not, but I'm going to tell you. Anyway. Yeah. No, um, so he was uh, my brother. Well, my brother-in-law, Stuart. Um, he is a diesel mechanic, mm. and he was working with another diesel, diesel mechanic. And uh, this guy apparently was way out, middle of nowhere, yeah, sort of. Know. On working on a, on a, on a truck yep. and I believe he was trying to f like straighten out the bed of the truck or he was doing something with a big long pry bar and he's like, reefing on it and he could, couldn't get it to work so he takes his big long so mechanics pry bar you know the really yeah, really yeah. tall one That's takes good. that throws it off the side of the truck and then he um you know he's getting probably a little bit flustered he's trying to do things and maybe he's trying to I think he might have been trying to like pull on it with his hands then and then he gets like a smaller pry bar and that doesn't work and Struggling to get this to work, so must have given up. He walks up to the end of the the flatbed and mm. jumps off. Yep. And hits that pry bar that he threw off the big long one right in between his nuts and his <laughs> asshole. <laughs> and it goes oh, up no. over four hundred millimeters. What like up inside? Up inside of him. You're joking. Like good two feet into he, him. And he, he lived. Turned himself into a popsicle. <laughs> he did, yeah. Jeez. Savage, one of the worst injuries that is I've ever heard of. Absolutely insane. He's right, he lived. How? But <laughs> <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the CFS had to come. Um in Australia we have like a volunteer firefighting service yep. that 
unfortunately gets looped into a lot of other things yeah. they probably don't need to be doing. Unfortunately, but, yeah. Um, and they, uh, I think they cut with an end grinder some of this off that and they took him in a hospital. So, like, you know, all the important bits are hanging around there. You'd want to be oh, careful with that grinder, mate. The blood would be unbelievable. Oh, mate. But yeah, yeah and oh, God, that is probably for me one of the worst injuries I've ever heard of yeah. like, to uh to cop that mm. but but I mean uh, I mean your brother had a yeah really yeah injury. my brother Scotty he's a he's a carpenter he's been a carpenter for well he did his apprenticeship same sort of dealio just a carpenter instead of a welder I guess but he's been doing it for a long time now and he was just cutting something on the little table saw something he would have done a thousand times before cutting his bit of timber and he getting close to the blade and so he goes, oh, I'll get the push block, a bit of timber to push it so his fingers don't get close. And he's going through and he reaches across to go grab the, uh, the push block and his finger just just nicks like the, the top of the blade. And it just felt like his hand went bang and he knocked his hand away. And he's like, oh, that bloody hurt. And then, yeah, blood hosing everywhere. And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> Six months off work, cut all the tendons um, in his finger. His finger has permanently got a little bend in it A little it now, bend in it, yeah. And, like, it doesn't go straight. Um, but, I mean, a bit of a blessing in disguise because he had so much time off work. That's how he uh, he met his wife. He met his wife. 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 Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, yeah. I actually remember visiting him in hospital. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he was, yeah, he was on all the, the good Whoa, painkillers. That's a there. savage one to have. Is it his left or his right hand, if you can think? Uh, it's his left hand. So, luckily... It doesn't affect like doesn't affect him at work now. But he used to play bass guitar. Can he still play bass? That stuff that up. Nah, because um, you probably had a similar sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. Feeling, what to say. Yeah. The feeling in the finger. So yeah, he hasn't been able to play guitar for years, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a it's a harsh reality because I had the same thing when I did my injury. Um, it, I just realized I went from, and I wasn't I wasn't any I wasn't. I wasn't uh, Jimmy I wasn't Jimi Hendrix, no, but I uh, I used to play guitar a fair bit and um, that kind of stopped that. Yeah. I, I guess I probably could take it back up. You know, like the um, guitarist from Black Sabbath was a sheet metal worker. Yeah. And he did the same thing. Exactly, yeah. Probably not in the exact same circumstances. No. But, um, and he made up like a little plastic Yeah, yeah, I remember hearing thing. about that, yeah. Yeah, I tried doing something a bit like that, but uh, it's weird. You go from being semi-competent at something mm. to now you don't know how to do it well, at all. Yeah, as soon as you lose that little bit of feeling, it's just, yeah, it's like learning to play the guitar all over again, really. Yeah, pretty rough. But, I mean, we're the lucky ones. There's some people, I remember when we did our trade training, um, our trade trainer at, at uh, our tech school, mm. he said to us, like, some people will go their entire careers without an injury mm. and they'll have one, that's one that kills them. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, you and know. I mean, dude, you've been heaps lucky. You've had some pretty gnarly burns. Oh, you lost one of your party tattoo. Yeah, yeah, I welded mm. something and then it bloody fell onto my, I was picking it up and moving it and it fell onto my arm and it did a nice burn over you know, yeah. my Simpsons tattoo. Your bloody Simpsons done. tattoo. Luckily, it's all good now. You can't tell, but... I'm very, very lucky with that. Yeah, guys, we want to hear what's your... Well, yeah. I mean, we, maybe we don't want to hear, but I mean... <laughs> oh, I want to hear. I want to hear this story. <laughs> well, yeah, give us like a, in the comments um, or hit us up on our Instagram, send us a message through that. Yeah. Uh, what's some of the workplace injuries you've heard of? Mm. Um, you know, we, we'll talk about it on the next one if we get yeah. some we get some stories worth talking about but absolutely yeah i mean everyone you talk to in trade everyone's got some sort of story mm. i'm not sure how it is overseas countries obviously we got a lot of overseas um viewership on some of our other content maybe mm. they'll watch this uh whether the ohs is do, like the workplace safety is different yeah. than other countries yeah. Yeah. um but i mean on some work sites you know all about it like uh well you wouldn't know about it but some work <laughs> sites are like um there's no safety oh no oh, there is for a first week and then they're like well the job was to get done yeah yeah so you know uh, yeah, I've only worked on one one job site for a, when I, with the place that I used to work for years ago, and that was enough to show me that I didn't want to work on a job site. Yeah, fair. I did a job <laughs> site, which was pretty sketch. Um, we were doing a retirement village, and we made these things called pan drainer benches. Yep. And it's a bench that has a toilet bowl in it, mm. more or less, mm. and it has an ability to flush like a toilet, right. so you can tip bedpans into oh, it. Okay, yeah, 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 so you don't have to clean anything by hand. Well, I guess not too much. But uh, like these benches are huge and they're super heavy. Mm. And at the time when we were at this um, this retirement village, it was a three-story, maybe it was two, it was two or three stories tall, mm. and there was no handrail on the staircase yet. 
and we had to carry these upstairs. Wicked. So in the, <laughs> in the end, the safest option was rope down to the floor, mm. loop into the toilet bowl thing, yep. tie that off, yep. and then two guys at the top pulling it up. <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong with that, yeah. right? Yeah, pretty There's sketch. We both could have fallen over the yeah. edge and died. <laughs> There's a lot of faith being put in the room. Oh, that, that retirement village ain't yeah. going to open itself though. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, the job site, the only one, it was just like a, it was a high rise building in, in the city somewhere in Adelaide. Um, and we, the, the company that I worked for had the contract to do all the door, like the door frames. And they had welding plates for where you, you mount the hinges. And whoever <laughs> made those at work welded every single one of those plates like 10 mil too low. So you could oh, put nice. the hinge in there. So I drew myself and, um, one of the other blokes, he, we drew the short straw and we had to go out there with the portable welder, which was not very portable, <laughs> and the portable gas bottle, which was still really heavy. And we had to go out there and weld up all four, like four holes on, I think, three hinges, so 12 holes per door, per doorway, and uh, <coughs> drill and re-tap every hole. I went through so many taps, snap, and then you oh, got to try and get the bloody tap in. I hate but tapping then, metal. Because it was obviously a, a building in construction, there was no, like there was the big elevator that goes on the side, but we just had to carry, like it was quicker for us to carry the welder up like 10 flights of stairs. Oh my God. And like we got right up to the top, <laughs> like we, we finished and we were like, yeah, beauty, done. You know, we'll, we'll treat ourselves and we'll take the, the side elevator all the way down to the bottom. So we get in there. And like, you know, you can cram a fair few people in there because obviously bigger than a normal um, elevator. <clears throat> We're all crammed in there and this bloke, so we go down a couple of levels and this bloke with like a, a pallet jack and a, and a big timber box, he wheels it in and so we're all squished against the side. And um, what I didn't realize, there was like a, a, a nail half hanging out. And as he pushed it in, it's like caught on my jeans. <laughs> Tore so your balls we, off. So we, well, <laughs> thankfully not. But we, we went down a couple of levels and he went to get off and he just goes back and rips my pants. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so it's luckily just... it was the end of the day, but I had a hole from pretty much, you know, family jewels all the way down so my you got leg. physically and sexually assaulted on and this website. Like, <laughs> beautiful. Great. Thanks you. You know, this... great two days and then, yeah, still had to drive back to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, didn't man. want to work on a job site after that yeah no I, I believe it the sketchiest one I did probably one of the last ones I worked on too um, it was summer of 2020 mm. yeah summer of 2020 now if you remember summer of uh, 2020 which is also the end of 2019 yeah we had brutal actually yeah because it was in December sorry my lie I told lies mm. it was uh, <laughs> December of 2019 yep. we had those crazy fires yeah that's right all the Australia was on fire yeah um, we oh, had geez. smoke in my living room from KI. That's right, yeah. It was insane. Yeah. So um, we'll talk a bit more about KI in a little bit, but uh, yeah, smoke in my house from an island that was nowhere near my house. Oh, and um, kilometers it about. was like 47 degrees this day. So we decided to get to the job site at like five, maybe? Still, I think it was about five. We'll it was still like, it was like 36 degrees outside. I'm not quite sure that is in Fahrenheit, but probably like 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Mm. Um, at four in the morning, <laughs> five yeah. in the morning and, um, and smoky all through the city as well. Mm. And, uh, we get to this job site and I was installing, it had to be done then apparently, oh, yeah. but I had to do <laughs> me and a couple other legends, like really appreciate these guys. You spoke to these two guys and, um, we we're putting in all the duct work for one of those range I was talking about Yep. on the roof. It was like 47 in the shade. Yeah. I'm going to say it was like somewhere around the 55 range. Mm. It was so hot on that roof. So I had so much sunscreen on, I turned to orange. I like permanently ruined the clothing I was wearing. The guys were worth laughing at it. Um, we all drank like 24, we bought these big packets of water. Yeah. Drank like 24 bottles of water. Oh, yeah. Didn't pee once. No, no. Just sweating out so much. And um, yeah, then uh, to, to get to this roof, mm. you had to climb up the fire escape of next door's building <laughs> and throw your tools onto that roof. And then jump You're over joking. the handrail to get onto that roof. It wasn't a big gap, but it was what's, a gap. What's wrong with the ladder? Like, just there you go. It was three story. Oh, okay. <laughs> a big ladder. This is a big jump too. Yeah. Crazy. And um, it was so bloody hot on that roof. Oh, jeez. You put yeah. a tool down, and you couldn't pick it back no, up in like yeah. five seconds time. And 
Yeah, that was probably because getting on and off. Plus, you're dizzy because it's so hot. Oh yeah, and it's everything smells like smoke. Mm. And um, Doesn't like sense. halfway through the workday, I put a um, you know, an impact driver, an impact mm. drill. Yeah, I put an impact drill down on this. Um, uh, we had like there was just a bunch of rugs all over the roof. Yeah, and uh, I guess I, I thought that was because you can't kneel on the bloody roof. You'll, light on fire <laughs> so i put this impact driver down on one of these things yeah. and it falls through the bloody roof oh, shit. and then it was covering a hole <laughs> and i'm looking around there's heaps of these things i've been walking all day oh, man. and i was like what the hell are these blankets covering up it's like oh they don't want to get leaves and shit into the kitchen i was like whoa no one wanted to tell me <laughs> shit, so, you can imagine that <laughs> yeah just like fall yeah. halfway through by the time you hit the ground you'd be seared because oh, the roof would be so bloody hot <laughs> jeez they didn't think to tell you no, <laughs> no. You just think, oh, no, these nice people. They put nice. blankets up here for it. It was like the second to last day of the year as well. Yeah. So it was like one of those jobs that you just couldn't wait to be finished with. Oh, but it was just so sketch. Jumping from roof to roof was a pretty nutty yeah. thing. I'm sure that was breaking that some sort of laws. Oh yeah, to be expected to do that is just <laughs> insane. Lucas, I got another one for you. Go for it. So I was randomly thinking about this the other day, mm. um, talking about KI before. Um, so Kangaroo Island is a huge island. Is um, but I don't think people realize how bloody big Kauai is. Oh yeah, it's massive. I think you can fit Singapore in eighteen times. You're joking. No, I looked at that. Re- I don't, actually, I don't know the exact amount. It might That's be eight. Crazy. But it is a <laughs> a lot of times you can. Fit, it's huge. It's oh, bigger yeah. than Victor Harbour to the city. Jeez. It's huge. That's yeah. Very big. So this giant, giant island that's like off the coast of yeah. South Australia. Considering the amount of people that live there, not very many people. It's live insane. There. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, and it's this massive, like I said, massive island, and it's mainly just scrub. There's mm. like a couple of townships there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Um, Wicked place. We went there in uh, year ten. Didn't I'm we? glad you brought that up. Yeah. That's what I was going to bring up. Yeah. So in year ten, that was great. Um, we had yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like the hound. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It was. It was. It was. But so in year ten, they did this thing, which was. Uh, we had these different camps and you could either go to Melbourne, I think it was, was it Victoria? I thought it was Canberra. It is. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, don't go? So, no, no, yeah. Can't be we're going on like yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> exactly. I can't remember yesterday. So though. yeah, uh, we had this option to go to, um, Canberra mm. and you could see the sights and sounds of Canberra. Yeah. Or you could go on the <laughs> KI survival camp. Yeah. Now... We have a friend who's also a school teacher now, and I've pitched this to him, and he couldn't believe it when I told him. <laughs> yeah. So you go to this camp, um, they give you a list of things that you're expected to have. So something to sleep in, mm. like a swag or a tent, yeah. something to sleep on. So yeah. if you don't have a swag, which is kind of for American listeners that don't know, swag's kind of like an all-in-one sleeping dealio. It's a... Um, they have swags in America. No, it's not a common thing. Really? Well, they've got more predators. It's funny that people oh, true, talk about yeah. how... To, sketch australia is but that's like a bear breeder oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, australia has some wildlife that's pretty dangerous but we don't have any predators no. well, apart from crocodiles well yeah but you're still pretty safe in the swag i reckon especially in south australia yeah i mean that crocodile wanted to get you <laughs> let's <laughs> at the zoo <laughs> but uh yeah so a swag is kind of like a Big canvas sleeping bag with your mattress already mm, in it. Yeah. Um, you can get them with poles, without poles. Yeah. It's, um, but anyway, that's no, sort of... Great. Yeah, so you had something to sleep in. And if you went in a swag, something to sleep on, like an air mattress or something. Mm-hmm. Um, backpack, all your clothes, obviously, you needed yeah. for this trip. Sleeping bag. It was a week camp as well. Yeah. Pretty hardcore. Yeah. Um, especially because a lot of the kids in the class had never been camping. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's completely thrown to the deep end. Yeah, and it was like two... So we had two campuses, our school. Mm. Um there was like the, our little country one and then like the little bit more of a residential um, campus. Yep. Uh, we went to this thing. Um, they told you to bring a knife. Yeah. So first flag, like a first warning sign. Yeah, they um, asked you a bunch of... How old were we? Bloody four uh, we're in year 10, so probably like 15. 15, 15, 15. 15 year old. I don't own a knife. Like my dad went and bought me a knife for <laughs> this because he had to have a knife. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then... Um, uh, none of the food you didn't need to bring any food no no that was all supplied I feel like we had to pay did you have to pay money to go on this it was yeah. like 80 bucks yeah well because they had to pay for you know the bus and then the, That's the right. ferry mm-hmm. over to Kingdom yeah Island yeah and and maybe the school must pay for the food must have done it was a week's worth of food and they were like good meals too yeah yeah, yeah. it wasn't funny yeah so I guess it's worth yeah. saying uh, we had a school teacher um, and she owned this giant property. That's right. Yeah, so we didn't have to pay for that. Yeah, so we? she owned this huge property because yeah. Kai is massive. So she owned 
you know, I think it was like a hundred acres. Yeah. It was pretty big. Big empty property. I think it was just a shed. And that was pretty much it. Yeah. And there was a long drop. Yeah. That's right. um, <laughs> so then they, what they did was they said to a few uh, parents, um, would you like to come and be like a chaperone type of deal? Mm. One of our parents had to go. Otherwise we weren't allowed to go. So my mum got roped into it. <laughs> um, I never knew that. <laughs> yeah. Mum had to go or one of our parents did. Uh, they, I don't know. They probably approached mum first because yeah. she didn't work. But I think we were actually, right. she might have worked at that time. Either way, yeah. she, she uh, poor, poor, poor thing. <laughs> she, got, she got roped into coming along. Um, and then they had a few like ex students come to help out with things. Yeah. Like that Stu guy we were talking about before. Yeah. Stu was there. Yeah, Stu was to help there. Out. So, this is uh, so how it was sort of structured was there was a fire in the middle of um, all like a big semicircle mm. of tents and swags. Yep. Yeah. And they had obviously boys and girls separated. Yeah. And uh, we could all sit around the fire. Oh, you had to bring a chair, a chair as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I had to bring a chair. So you could all sit around the fire, and you know, uh, I think there was things we had to join in with. But mm. you know, like a week camp's a fair. Like a two day camp would probably would have been all right. But mm. I don't know, it was a week. This is where it gets nutty. <laughs> One of the nights we rotated between groups of because everyone got put into groups to do things like chores. Yeah, like yeah, a so site cleaning and and they had other and that. Yeah, they had like things that are really handy because it's a big property they could do things like they had a member of the cfs there two of them before mm-hmm. and uh, they lit a fire and then we all right. got to have a go at um, putting one out with a blanket and with a yeah. fire extinguisher yeah. i forgot about that. that's cool yeah. that's cool i mean that, like what a cool skill to learn like Absolutely. something that i actually may need in life it's a necessary skill as well for sure algebra <laughs> <laughs> um Don't need that but they had this thing called the survival uh sorry it was the the what was it, it was the Survival solo, night. Solo night. Solo night. The yeah, solo yeah. night. That so was great. The solo night is crazy oh, in yeah. concept. <laughs> 15 year old kids, we get driven out in a ute. Yeah. <laughs> in the, the back of a ute. Yeah. No, it, it was like a cage trailer. They just jammed a bunch of That's right. It was a bloody a cage trailer. Cage trailer. So, and we drive out <laughs> to yeah. the forest. Yeah. The which bush. was huge. Yep. And they say, go find a spot. So it was like a 10 minute drive. So yeah. you're a while away from anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Find a spot. Well away from all your friends. Yeah, yeah, you can't. You're not allowed to see you, mate. No training. Mm-hmm. No. Well, here's a good spot to camp. Here's not a good spot to camp. Looking back on it, I remember a lot of big fallen branches. That could have been any of us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, find a spot. They gave us a tarp. Two tarps. Two tarps. Two tarps. Two tarps. One for the bottom and one for the top. Over the top. Yep. yep. No training on how to set nope. them up. <laughs> um, you were given about 15 meters of terrible nylon oh, rope. Oh yeah, that went. Like it just undone itself magically. Yeah, and your knife if you brought it. Oh, um, yeah. One of our idiot friends didn't bring a knife, so he had a Stanley knife. <laughs> How do they let him <laughs> buy a Stanley knife? <laughs> yeah, that's another point. <laughs> yeah, so go find the spot out there. Then they also gave you matches. That's right. And you were to build a shelter yep. at 15. Yep. A fire. Yep. I, did we just go without tea that night? Or were we supposed to cook our own food? Because I didn't, we didn't cook our own We must have had tea and we then gone. We must have eaten earlier, yeah. That's right, because you went and you set all your gear up and then you came back when it was bedtime. That's right, yeah. yeah go find it again in the dark. <laughs> you, <laughs> so yeah, I remember I set up my spot. Again, I was 15 with no idea what I was yeah. doing. On top of an anthill. Yeah, that's right. And I was like, well, this ain't going to work. So I moved somewhere fairly close to you. Mm-hmm. And then all the teachers came up and said, no, nah, too close to him. So... Mm. I was like, whatever then. And I walked forever. (laughs) And then we all ended up, yeah, we all had our spot. We all went to it that night. Yeah. And had a huge fire, unsupervised. Absolutely. (laughs) We like, we're spraying deodorant at it. That's right. Lighting with bloody deodorant. Yeah. And then uh, they found that there was wild pigs on the property. Yeah. And snakes. Yep. That tarp will do you well. Yeah, Or your pocket, your Stanley blade. A bunch of blue tarps. (laughs) Your box cutter. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and then we uh, risked the bushfire. How crazy is that? Could you imagine that doing that these days? That was insane. Like, <laughs> that, that's no way that's going to happen these days. When my kid goes to school, they're going to be, nah, no, yeah. no chance, mate. I mean, nothing bad that I, oh, no, I was about to say nothing bad happened, but you sliced your finger I up. I did, yes. <laughs> yes. So we had to wake up earlier than the rest of the group that was back at camp because we had to pack up all of our stuff and get back there in time for brekkie, if you remember. And... One of the teachers gave this kid the duty of going around yeah, to all right. the all the little little camp setups and waking everyone up so they can pack their stuff down. Conveniently missed me, <laughs> and so everyone else is packing up and I'm snoozing away. <laughs> and then you came up and you 
like kick my foot because I must have been hanging out or something and you're like oi wake up I got a guy and I'm like yeah whatever and I'm, I thought you were just you know talking shit and then you came back and kicked me again and I was like oh crap and so I had like 30 seconds to get out and pack up all this stuff that everyone else had like half an hour to do and uh, because uh, even though I went to scouts I don't remember any of the bloody knots that I learned I just did knot after knot after knot when I was tying down the batar <laughs> and so I thought bugger it I'm not going to undo this conglomeration of knots that I've done. I'm just going to cut it with this brand new knife that I got for my birthday not too long ago. <laughs> it was a cool knife. Yeah, it was a sick knife. I've still got it now. Still got it? Nice. Yeah. Not, a, not as sharp as what it was, but bloody sharp. It man. was sharp then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like cutting through this rope and then went through it. And I don't know how I managed to do it. To this day, no clue how. But yeah, I did obviously not as bad as that. But I It was pretty bad. Took the top, pretty much the top of that finger off and it was just hanging on by a flat. It was gross, yeah. And I was like, oh no. And like there's blood streaming down my arm, yeah. but I still got to pack my stuff up. And then I, like you're walking away, I'm like, oh, Nathan, can you get me a band-aid? And you're like, yeah, whatever. And just kept going. And I was like, okay. I believe I had the intention of getting one, but I also think I have ADD. So <laughs> yeah. I kind of just forgot about that immediately after. And so then you didn't come back and I was like, all right, I'm just doing this stuff with one hand now while there's blood streaming down my arm. I've got an arm full of tarp and stuff and I finally get back to the group and this arm's just covered in blood. Yeah, I remember being like, whoa, and you weren't like, kidding. Where's that bloody band-aid, mate? Because <laughs> remember that night in, the, uh, um, in, my, in our tent, mm. we had woken up, or you'd woke me up because it was crazy wet weather as well. Oh, yeah, it was blowing a gale. Yeah, windy as raining. Mm. <laughs> Safe. Safe, yeah. And, um, no, real good. <laughs> I remember in the tent because we shared a tent, mm. there was a uh, torch yeah, spot. Yeah, we tied the torch on the Yeah, the there top. was a spot for it. And that was hanging down, but because it was windy, it was kind of like swinging. Mm, and yeah. you'd get like brief fleeting moments of light where it'd be like a horror movie. Yeah, because I wanted to like... Because <laughs> I changed your... Ba- oh, I helped yeah. you change your band-aid because you... And it was so wet with blood yeah, that it wasn't it sticking was to you soaked, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Remember I showed the teacher and he was like, oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like, oh, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought, hey? Yeah. Yeah, good times. But no, uh, that was good. I enjoyed it. Well, it was a good Still, introduction to the camping. Mode. Absolutely, you know, and maybe if we we didn't do that, we might not like camping as much as what we do nowadays. But who's well, there? I reckon it would have ruined it for a few people, <laughs> probably the other way for some people. Hi <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much. If you made it all the way to the end, we really appreciate it. Yep. Um, make sure you get down in the comments below. Leave um, tell us what you know some of those stories you've heard about workplace injuries. Absolutely, or, yeah. You know, <laughs> be careful with that one, I guess. But uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, don't do something just so you can comment. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, jump off the um, retirement home staircase Ooh. just so you can be a part of it. But um, <laughs> And tell us um, some wildlife stories, you know. Absolutely. Uh, Australia's a pretty crazy place, I'm sure. There's some good stories there. Otherwise, I know the wildlife overseas is pretty nutty too, so hmm. I want to hear all about that. But yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Making it all the way to the end. If you could leave a like, it goes a really long way. Um, you know, I don't want to be too YouTube tropey, but if, <laughs> if you could leave a like or if you're interested in this kind of content, make sure you subscribe. Um, probably be chopping this up into clips as well so you might see those spread out Mm -hmm. and then they'll eventually get chopped up even more into shorts that'll probably make it to some of our socials so um, speaking of the other socials you're more than welcome to check them out Uh, TikTok pages is over 700,000 now if you can believe that and then we're fastly approaching 20,000 Insta yep so that's pretty nuts and uh, yeah make sure you shoot us a message there leave a like Um, that's pretty much what I got for you guys unless you got anything else to touch on no, I reckon you've summed it up pretty well, mate. Just, Beautiful. Even if you don't have anything to say, just message to say good day. You know, yeah, like, for sure. You know, make fun of us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just just whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, give us a better name for the Real Steel Podcast other than the Real Steel Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so even though we have to change the acronym. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <a new> sign. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, heaps, guys. Till next time. Cheers. <laughs>